Today we'll be doing an introduction to Photoshop Essentials. We're going to learn where to find and how to use some of the essential tools in Photoshop that we'll need for today's exercise. To begin, I want you to email all of the photogram photos you took over the last couple days to your first class email server. Once you've done that, open the email and click on the file. When the file appears on your screen, go to the upper left hand corner and click Save As. With your first photogram, title it Photogram 1. For your second would be 2, 3, 4, and so on. I'm going to save to my desktop. I've already saved it, so I'll replace it. And then I'm going to click out of that. Save all of your photograms at once, and then you can see I have my photogram image, photogram 1, on my desktop. At this time, I want to open Photoshop. If you go to your Finder, Applications, Photoshop CS6, click it, and then you'll have your Photoshop window appear. You can minimize your Photoshop window. Click on Photogram 1, and then you can drag and drop it into the Photoshop program. At this time, you should see your photogram appear in Photoshop. Now to begin, we're going to start thinking about cropping and framing our image. When thinking about this, I want you to consider, do you want to see the whole image? What's the most interesting part? And what part might you want to discard? For me, I'm not so interested in the black periphery. I'm interested in the composition that we've created on our light box. So to crop your image, you'll go to the left hand toolbar, five icons down, one, two, three, four, five, and click. That is our crop tool. You'll see a frame come around your image. And at this time, you can start to frame and crop the image so it looks to your desired taste. For me, I like that, so I can double click. Then you can click the arrow cursor, the move tool, to apply it. And then we have our cropped image. So now, to create our photogram similar to Man Ray, we'll start by going to Image and Adjustments. In Image and Adjustments, on the third section down, you'll see Invert. You can click, and Invert will invert your image. The shortcut is Command-I. I can keep moving it back and forth. So notice this is starting to look more like the photograms we've seen in class. So now, to continue, we can go back to Image and Adjustments. We can go to the second bar down and create it to be black and white if we desire. So now we have our image black and white. The next thing that I want you to consider is going back to Image, Adjustments, and going to the levels. The ways that levels work is the left tab controls the shadows, the middle tab controls the midtones, and the far right tab controls the highlights. So you'll see if I drag the highlights, I can move it over and start to adjust the level of the highlight. If I go from here, I can move to the level of the shadow. At the very bottom, you have more general output levels where you can make the whole image lighter or you can make the whole image darker. So now I want you to take some time and play around with how you can darken the image to make it the most dramatic to create the effect that you intend. So 
So I'm just playing around until I see the image appear how I want it to, which I want it to appear fairly dark and the lights to be fairly light. If you like what you did, then you can click OK. If you don't, you can click Cancel. And if you want to have the program adjust it automatically to its desire, then you can click Auto. For me, I like my image a little bit darker. So I'm going to go back to Cancel and then recreate what I liked initially. So once I have that, then <clears throat> you can also start to play around with the brightness and contrast. So the brightness, as it says, changes how bright your image is, and the contrast changes the contrast. I liked it before, so I'm just going to click Cancel. So after experimenting with the Levels application, in the brightness and contrast, we can now experiment with a couple other applications, still through working with image and adjustments, but now going to color balance. Color balance, as you can see at the bottom, similarly to levels, we have shadows, midtones, and highlights. And we also have a variation of different colors that we can change our image to. So, I'd like you to experiment playing around with changing your image to different colors. Think of the motivations that Stephen assigned in Tuesday's exercise. In what, if you made a storm, what might color would a storm be? So right now I'm just playing around. Maybe is this a toxic storm? Is it a tornado where the sky usually turns green right before it storms? This is up to you. Play around with it. These tools will help you when we move into digital photography and learn how to manipulate our images, which is what we're starting to do right now. Depending on what you like, you can save it by clicking OK, or you can cancel it. I'm going to cancel. And the last thing that I want to show you for today, still going to image and adjustments, is now playing around with the exposure. So thinking of what we learned a couple of weeks back when developing our film and exposing the image to the light for a certain amount of time. Noticing if we underexpose the image, then it turns out to be all black. And if we overexpose the image, it turns out to be all white because too much light has got in through the shutter to essentially blow out the image. So now, depending on what your aesthetic choice is, you can start to work within the exposure to see do you like a darker exposure? Is the default the exposure that you like? Or I notice when I start to overexpose it a little bit, I have more contrast starting to happen within the feather and the details that I didn't see when it was so dark. You can use this to whatever effect you want to create. So let's say I like that. I'll click OK. And now I have something pretty different than, than I started with. So you can see this is the image that I started. And by using tools in Photoshop, then I can manipulate the image to look very differently and have an effect that is much similar to Man Ray's photograms, where it has 
a different quality that makes us kind of search for these materials and what's going on in the picture frame. So after you've changed and manipulated and modified your first image, then I'd like you to go back up to, in Photoshop to File, Save, go to Large File, Maximum Quality of 12, it should be a JPEG, click OK. And so now I've saved my image to my desktop. And here I have my final image. So now that we have demonstrated our first photogram, I'd like you to take the rest of the class time to edit and modify at least three of your photograms that you took on Monday and Tuesday. Once you have modified and edited your three photograms, please show them to Stephen and I and email them to both of us for us to print for you so you can see them physically next week. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and let us know. Thank you.